Now, if this is the first video that you're ever watching of mine and you're not aware already, we have recently been running a little mini-series on Elden Ring where I discuss the rarest items that you can find in the game and I let you know whether they're absolute trash and you're wasting your time by farming them or if they're the best thing known to man and you definitely need to be getting your hands on them. While doing that little mini-series, it prompted me to have the idea of whether or not we can actually complete Elden Ring or how long, I guess, it would take to complete Elden Ring just purely using those highly rated rare items. Obviously, first of all, we got to dictate what makes a rare item, and for this criteria, I was only using items that has at least, or I should say at the most, a 0.5% drop rate at base discovery. And those are the specific items I can use. So no, like, buying stuff from merchants, no using, like, remembrances to use boss weapons, no crafting to, you know, use stat boosters, and also I'm avoiding using things like incantations, again, to help with stat boosts. But if that doesn't sound difficult enough I also added the caveat in having like a level up system for the weapons that we're using and how much I can upgrade them per boss so starting off at the very beginning obviously we don't have any upgrades but I cannot upgrade the weapon until I defeat my first boss and once defeating him I can then use the next smithing stone so it'll be smithing stone one allowing me if it's just a normal upgrade so using the regular smithing stones to get it to plus three or if it's a somber smithing stone again just use the one to get it plus one but then if I defeat another main boss that then allows me to use smithing stone 2 so to make it a plus 6 weapon if it's a normal smithing stone or plus 2 if it's somber and then obviously the smithing upgrades increase respectively with each boss that I defeat and again not only that but I'm also capping my character's level to 125 so I can't surpass level 125 I can do it with a lesser level if I wanted to which I think I actually do spoiler alert but rather than obviously just going to a rune farm and making my character level 500 straight away that's boring and pointless so yeah, we just also level up our character in line with the progression of the story as well So that's another caveat just to bear in mind. But yeah, without boring you too much with that intro Hopefully you guys do enjoy this video It's gonna be a much longer video than what we're used to seeing on this channel So if you do happen to like it, please do leave a like rating down below It'd be really appreciated and then maybe I can make more in the future But definitely sit back relax grab a drink first of all grab some food and let me show you how you can complete Elden Ring using only the rare rarest items in the game. So yeah, first of all, um, as with every other good playthrough that we need to do, and I just use this anyway, we are choosing the Wretch build. Um, not only because then all the stats are spread nice and evenly across the board at 10s, you know, but it also means that we literally only have the club as the only item in our inventory. The idea behind this is that we will then use the club to go and farm for the first weapon before we then take on any bosses or do any other farms to obtain the extra rare weapons that we pick up throughout the playthrough. Of course, I'm going to be showing you the times that it took to obtain all of the items that I'm going to be farming because I'm guessing that's the part that you're mainly interested in. So don't worry, that will also be on screen whenever I'm doing the farms. And actually, with Limgrave itself, there was two opportunities to farm for two different types of weapons. We had the opportunity to go and get the Noble Slender Sword, which is being carried by quite a few Aristocats that are also residing just east of the lake, sort of like southeast of the lake where the dragon spawns, with that convoy with the carriage that's uh, just sort of like walking up the path. Or we could head further south into Limgrave and head towards the church, which is also where the skeletons are residing in the graveyard, one of which is holding two curved swords, which again are a 0.5% drop rate. So I had two options, and me, being the most indecisive person in the world, I decided to go for both because I knew I would probably switch it up. I would love to use the curve swords going forward in the game. So rather than just do the one, I thought, you know what? Let's grab both. But of course, first of all, as it was the nearest one to me, I decided to farm the Noble Slender Sword as I knew that had a much lower weight as well. And to be fair, the Ash of War is very good to break enemy stances. So also bear that in mind and we're going to be using that as like our main weapon for the first stages of this playthrough. So we jumped right into it. I also went to go use Selen's like Sight of Grace um, because it's literally just outside of where these enemies are located. But I also forgot that first of all, you need to defeat a boss. Um, so I couldn't use that area because I couldn't defeat the boss with just the club. So we had to reside to the further away Grace or the next Sight of Grace that's closest to it. And then basically ride over, take out the enemies and rinse and repeat that method instead. 
Again, you're going to be seeing the farm method on screen whilst I'm talking about it. I'll be showing you all of them for the items that we're going to be using, of course. And typically, this is much harder to obtain, but I actually managed to get this fairly quickly, which is obviously very, very good considering I was expecting to be here for about an hour or so, as I only have 10 discoveries. So we've literally got like one of the worst chances we can have <laughs> at the very beginning to get this weapon, but we actually got it in just under 10 and a half minutes. Again, just to preempt this, if you're going to be doing a similar playthrough, depending on the weapons that you're going for, expect to be here a little bit longer than 10 and a half minutes. I just got incredibly lucky, it seems. And yeah, there are multiple enemies, of course, within this little convoy. But just to give you context, when I actually farmed this weapon for my first video, covering this in more detail, I had about 50, 60 arcane, and it took me about an hour. So I was expecting to be here for the long haul, but luck was just obviously on my side today, and I managed to get it pretty damn quickly, which is always nice. So with that one in the bag, we headed towards the church and went to go get two of the curved swords. And I knew if I needed to have like a crutch build um, later on, curved swords are obviously incredibly useful if you can make a bleed build fairly early on, which don't worry. I don't just use bleed throughout the whole playthrough. I do mix it up to make it interesting. But if I needed to use say a crutch build to get me through a boss if I'm struggling, um, then yes, the curved swords were very, very very good to have especially with bleed affinity and like the quick attacks that they use when using the jump attacks so that's why I also picked those bad boys up in case I needed them for later. Now this farm is a lot easier because the skeleton that we kill is literally just outside the side of grace so yeah managed to get that within a matter of minutes. I got two of them in fact within 8 minutes and 21 seconds. So I've spent just under uh, 19 minutes so far in my farming attempts and I've already got, th well, three incredibly rare items. So we're, we're off to a very, very good start, but uh, don't expect this to happen every time. <laughs> but with two really useful weapons in the bag, I also needed to get myself some armor. Again, only being level one, I had a couple of choices because I still had access to Kaled. I also had access to going back to say the aristocrats and getting their armors because they are also a 0.5% drop rate but I needed something that was actually going to protect me and not just act like a wet paper bag whenever I was being hit with a sword so I needed some actual decent armor and I was also keeping the late game in mind because there is one particular armor set that I'm really enjoying using on my main character at the moment and it's also incredibly rare and that is the unaltered banished knight armor. The only thing with this though is the armor piece with the cape intact, so the unaltered version, can only be dropped by two specific enemies in the game, and they are residing in Castle Sol, which is located in the Mountain of the Giants. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to get there at this moment in time, so with that in mind, I then decided to go to the Dragon Communion, which is resided in Kaelid, to take on the Wandering Banished Knight there, because he also has one of the rarest helmets because it's got the cloth helmet which only he and I think maybe one other banished knight drops within the game and again this is a 0.5% drop rate so he was my target of choice to strip him of his armor and use it for myself. Just whilst I'm showing you the farm here there is also another enemy that is kind of sort of like nearby to this one, is if you're heading towards Red Main Castle, so where Radan resides. If you're looking straight on from that bridge, there is like a little pathway to the left where there's gonna be a Red Main soldier riding a horse. If you were to farm him, for instance, he also drops his armor, which I believe he's one of, again, like one or two enemies that drop the Red Main armor, which again is a 0.5% drop rate. I did try to farm him, but again, being level one, um, I was just getting rinsed. And rather than doing a boss fight basically every time to try and farm for an armor piece, I took the easy option and uh, took out the guy that wasn't looking because I'm a wimp and um, yeah, it's just easy to get the sneak attacks, take away half the health and then hit him once or twice with the, uh, the skill power. But we're not gonna mention that, all right? We still worked hard for our armor, okay? And with the hard graft of purely 11 minutes and 43 seconds, um, we now had the full 
altered, it's not quite unaltered, but altered Banished Knight armor set and we were looking pretty damn good. And I know what you're probably thinking with all of these items that we're getting, um, there's a small little thing that I'm forgetting about called Equip Load. Uh, yeah, we were um, pretty damn heavy um, <laughs> wearing all of the armor, so at the very beginning you're probably going to be seeing me use like half of the armor just to make sure that I'm definitely in the medium weight um, so I can actually dodge and move and not feel like a chunky boy until we get our endurance up um, yeah you're gonna be seeing me using most of the armor but not all of it and then as I get my endurance up I will then start using the full armor set to give myself the full protection but as we were in Kaled as well before going towards the Morgit boss fight we also decided to pick up the Radigan scar seal to again boost uh, endurance and all the other stats as well but it also does reduce our damage negation but again with the armor we have that's fine the early game and just to also preface with me running around Kaelid and the other areas to farm these weapons and get the items that I need for the story um, bear in mind I'm also getting the sacred tears and the golden seeds that I go past I'm not going to bore you with all of those locations but again just bear in mind that you're going to be seeing my flask uses go up as well as the amount that they replenish go up just as the video progresses because again leaving out the boring bits but i'm sure you're already well aware of that and yeah it was time to go and take on the first boss uh, to get my first upgrade on my weapons now you're probably wondering hmm that's a nice summon sign on the floor am i going to use it am i f yes i am going to use it i gave myself a little note to not use say the uh like the bell to summon in like uh mimic tier or like the walls or anything like that so i don't actually summon uh, the upgradable summons but if there is an npc that's residing outside the boss fight and they want to help me out I'm not going to say no to that, so you may see uh, some fights where I have the NPCs helping me out just because it makes it a little bit easier and where I'm obviously a lower level, not being able to use the full armor, I'm also a bit of a pussy, but realistically I'm just trash at the game, I haven't played it for a while, so rather than wasting days on the first boss, um, which make our lives a little bit easier and just complete it like this way. It's not cheating, alright, it's just getting a helping hand, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Leave me be. But no, with the helping hand from Roger, um, it made it pretty easy to take down Morgit, of course. Upgraded the Noble Slender Sword and just then went straight into the Godric fight. I wanted to get this one over and done with as soon as possible because once defeating Godric, uh, we then actually have access to his great rune. So once we defeated him, we headed back down towards the middle of the Stormvale Castle to then take on the three giants and gain access to the tower to obtain his great rune. And this one is going to be the one that we use throughout the whole playthrough. It's always one that I use with any of my characters, just because when we have a great rune active, it gives plus five, yes, plus five, to all of your stats that you have, which is obviously incredible early game, especially when I'm trying to get things like equipment load up. I'm maybe not focusing on vigor as much because I'm trying to increase my endurance as much as possible. And it obviously just increases the damage output with the weapons, which can be a bit mediocre, uh, especially with things like this Noble Slender Sword, because it's not the greatest or the most heavy hitting thing in the world. Any additional damage is more more than welcome to me. So we obviously obtain a Goldrick's Great Rune and use that pretty much throughout the whole playthrough. I don't think I change it, so that's the, the one that we stick by. And with that acquired, it was then time to go and just clear up the rest of Limgrave, picking up the last medallion piece that we needed. And again, incidentally, whilst we're here, the red main soldier that's actually protecting this medallion piece also holds the Ash of War, the bloody slash. And again, if you wanted to use a bleed build straight away, like I do, this is the quickest way to obtain bleed and put it onto your weapon. So once defeating this red main knight, he will drop that for you. You can then go and apply this Ash of War and the bleed affinity to this weapon. And that's exactly what we did, because again, it just gives us that little extra boost when using this. It also switches up the Ash of War, so I'm not using the same thing over and over again. Made sure to go back and pick up our Wonder Physic as well, because I missed that earlier on, so definitely make sure you pick this up because again you can use that to boost your stats and just general help you out with boss fights later on in the game so picked up the wonder physic and again much like the flask upgrades so like the sacred tears and the golden seeds i was also making sure that i picked up the bell bearings for the smithing stones and the somber smithing stones as i was progressing through the game um, that way because i'm obviously using multiple weapons i didn't then have to just rely on drops for the upgrade materials and i guess that's kind of going against the objective of the game but there is enough upgrade material for purely one 
weapon so if I was just say using the noble slender sword throughout the playthrough there is enough upgrade material that are drops or found in the caves throughout the game but where I'm using multiple weapons I wanted to make sure that I had these available so I could just upgrade the weapons as quickly as possible rather than spending hours on end farming them because otherwise this video would never come out <laughs> so um yeah that's a little thing there as well to note that I will be getting my upgrade materials from the bell bearings but they're the only ones that I'm picking up and using so I've ruined this video all right I'm sorry but if you can let me off with that one um, we then continue on with the rest of the story we rinse Renala with our newfound bloody slash and it makes it an absolute breeze meaning that we now have plus nine and plus three as our upgrade materials and I thought now was the perfect time to take on Radan. Again, the reason why I went back to take him on is to have access to Nocron because again, there's a wet blade in there which allows you to use the bleed affinities on any of your weapons. But I'll be completely honest with you, this Radan fight I think took longer than any of the farms that I had to endure um, for any of the weapons or items that we were farming today. Radan is literally like my kryptonite. I cannot tell you how many times I just fail at this fight. No matter if I'm doing a challenge or just genuinely playing the game, Radan just seems to be the one that slaps me about, chews me up and throws me in the trash because, well, I am trash. Here is a montage of me being exactly that. <laughs> Just struggle and I don't know why I don't know what it is with Radan is it because I'm distracted by his little mini horse I don't know but even when I summon everyone in they almost like die immediately and I'm like ah oh, cheers guys I just spent like longer summoning you in than the time it took for you to be taken straight back out and yeah it's, it's just it's not a good experience for me but we prevailed we carried on going i was just brute force just literally slashing him literally with the bloody slash and just hoping and praying that somebody survived from his like meteor strike which fortunately they did <laughs> we eventually got him i'm not going to tell you how long it took to beat him because i'm not willing to be judged just know it was a pretty damn long time all right but with that ultimate grind <laughs> happening we then had the ability to go to Nocron defeated our little mimic tier by taking our old infantry off and then just applying the weapon to cheat that out so pro tip if ever you're coming against a mimic tier just literally unequip everything and then just equip your weapon and then it's a free kill you're welcome and obtained that wet blade that I mentioned earlier to allow us to use bleed affinities on any of our weapons so now with the curve swords that we got earlier in this video we could apply that to them and create the ultimate bleed build to help us through anything and I'll be honest this is pretty much what I used up until the fire giant so Godfrey's phantom bye bye more got oh that's cute. I wish I had some more elaborate way of showing you how I navigated through Liondel Capital, but I'll be completely honest, from the point of getting these curve swords and applying them to the <laughs> to the build, um, I was just holding the sprint button, running through, got to the boss, took him down in about five seconds, and um, yeah, just rinse and repeat for, <laughs> for those like couple of bosses. So there's nothing really interesting to show you. I'm sorry, it's not my fault that curve swords with the jump attack and bleed affinity are just ridiculously OP, okay? And with my OP curve swords, we went and tickled the little cuffs off of the fire giant, released him from his shackles and exploited that weak area to just rinse his health with the bleed affinity. Again, I wish I could say this fight was more exhilarating, but just standing underneath him, pressing the A or X button whilst pressing LB or L2, um, that's about as riveting as it got. And just like that, the fire giant was done. We had our plus 18 availability to upgrade our weapons and also the plus six for the somber smithing stones. But it was now time to go and farm some more weapons because yes, bleed has been my friend and has allowed me to skip half of the game in about two minutes of this video, but it is ultimately very boring. So we had a few things that I wanted to do. I wanted to go and get the greatsword, the watchdog's greatsword, as it's probably one of the best colossal weapons. So if I ever wanted to use that, I had that available to me as well. I also, as we were now in the mountain of the giants, needed to go and get the unaltered 
armor set so then I had the true rarest armor that I could get so get it as quickly as possible for you guys but then also I wanted to switch things up and do one of the hardest farms that I had to endure so we'll come to that in a moment we need to defeat the watchdog that's residing in the uh, hero's grace the uh, mountain of the giants hero grace and upon going down the elevator you then have the site of grace which is the one that you always refresh to and that's where the start of the farm is jump down into like the main room and there'll be like a massive yellow ball of light which you need to get the watchdog to go into to then farm him because he's a phantom before going into the light and you can't damage him but this process can take about sort of two minutes or so a minute and a half two minutes just to farm him i managed to get the great sword in 11 minutes and 51 seconds so theoretically i got it in about five or six attempts again this is another one with my previous video that i made on this weapon it took me hours hours to get but it just seems that if you have a lower discovery you have a much greater chance of getting these weapons so all those people telling you to upgrade your arcane to you know boost your chances get the silver scarab get the silver pickle falfords don't bother just stick at like 20 25 arcane get yourself a great rune get yourself radigan scar seal and you're good to go my friends <laughs> but no seriously this took hardly anything at all. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by getting it, and that meant I can then move on to the unaltered banished knight armor. Heading over there, we need to get to like the uh, Church of the Eclipse, which is like in the middle of the castle, because we use that side to grace again as the start of the farm. I typically, because I'm an idiot, um, would go out of the church after hanging a left, turn right to go up the ladder to take on what I call the rabid enemy so it's the one with the red eyes that has the rampage ability where he just relentlessly attacks and he's quicker deals more damage and it's just an absolute nightmare to take on i didn't realize again reiterating the fact that i'm an idiot that the other enemy because as i mentioned earlier there's two that have this armor the other banished knight that has the armor is not rampaged I thought they were both Rampage, so I was trying to pick the lesser of the two evils, but I was getting it incredibly wrong. I was choosing the wrong one, so after realising this fact and spending about half an hour trying to farm and just relentlessly die, um, I then quickly switched to the non-Rampage one. And guess what? I got it almost straight away. So realistically, uh, the farm in total took about 40 minutes, uh, when it should have taken about two. So pro tip, if you're looking for the banished knight armor, when you're using this side of grace, head right straight back out of the church as like going back to the way that you've came essentially. Sneak past the couple of phantom uh, enemies that are there so you can go up this ladder, so you can go across like the little like broad walk that's there on the side. Across the wooden bridge is the non-rampage banished knight and he's a lot easier to defeat and he is the one that you need to be farming and hopefully you're as lucky as I am and you get it on your first couple of attempts. So yeah, with that, we now had the full armor available to us, but I wasn't quite done yet. With this newfound luck that I had, I thought I would go and get two of the hardest to farm weapons in the game. To do so, we had to get access to the Volcano Manor, so I went back and started the Raya quest to gain access to it. Completed three of the contracts that you need to do to gain access to the forecourt in the Volcano Manor, so you continue on with Raya's quest where she becomes a serpent, spoiler alert, and then you can go through the secret passage to get to the, it's like, outside of the Volcano Manor, but within the Volcano Manor, if that makes sense. We then need to take on the mini-boss here, so the Godskin boss that's resided in the Church of Eagley, because once we defeat him, we use this Site of Grace as our farming start to get the Magma Blades. The Magma Blade was the last thing that I wanted to get because this is what I wanted to use going forward because I knew that the Elden Beast and Radagon are also uh, resistant to bleed, so there's no point using any of my other weapons. I also had my Watchdog weapon, so if I wanted to just use pure strength, I could do, but ideally I wanted to keep sort of like the Faith Dex kind of build going and also have the chance to use the really unique Ash of War that the Magma Blade has to spew lava everywhere. So that's why I ideally wanted two of them to dual wield them and also make use of the skill power. As I mentioned, this one is typically really hard to get and it was really hard for me to get this time. As you know, I wasn't really taking any more than say 15 minutes on any of the farms bar maybe obviously the, the armor piece that we just mentioned a moment ago. But had I been killing the right enemy, um, I probably would have got it quite soon. With the magma blade, I literally took three sessions 
to farm it. The first little session took about 15 minutes and 30 without getting any drops. I then decided to spend another 36 minutes and 40 seconds trying to get it, again, to no avail. But it was on my next attempt where I got both of them, and in order to get both of them, it took me another 40 minutes and 39 seconds. So in total, I spent an hour and 32 minutes of my life trying to get this goddamn weapon. But realistically, it was time well spent. Obviously, having the ability to now upgrade my weapons to plus six, I went and did exactly that. I also started the Millicent quest to basically progress that as far as I could until she then gets to the point where she's at Altus Plateau in the Windmill Village with her prosthesis, because then I could kill her to get her prosthesis talisman. I believe you can probably kill her off sooner, but I was just continuing off her quest anyway, just going to the different areas areas and getting like the, the golden seeds and things like that I was mentioning earlier but when she obviously was residing in the Altus Plateau I then decided to take her on defeat her for her to drop the Millicent's prosthesis because this is sort of like the second best uh, talisman that we're going to be running on this build because at the moment I'm only really using Radagon Scar Seal and with this one it not only increases our dexterity but it also increases the damage output with successive attacks which can obviously be extremely useful for a build that has a dual wield sort of like curve sword that can do four attacks in one move. But it was then time to take on Faram Azula and more specifically the Godskin duo. And I'll be honest, I had to revert back to the bleed build because again, where there's two of them, I just had to take them out as quickly as humanly possible. I tried using the magma blades, but I also didn't have Beryl available to me for whatever reason, I don't know why. So it was just me against the two of them. I couldn't use any like the of the sleep greases or anything like that. I just had to literally go gung ho in with the bleed build, take out the first one, take out the second one, and then yeah, just take it from there. And I also didn't count this as like a main boss, so I didn't increase the upgrades because I was only going for Malekev as like the main boss in the Fal Faramazula area. So that's why I also didn't upgrade my weapons, but I went straight to Malekev with the magma blades because again I wanted to use them first of all and we actually did quite well. It took me about three or four attempts but I sort of remembered his move sets from again struggling with him so much when first playing this game and Malekev although he's probably more difficult than Radan I actually find it a lot easier to take him on I guess just where I had so much more time trying to defeat him beforehand like I say where I struggled. Um, I somewhat know his move sets like the back of my hand now so yeah it's fairly easy to take on for me and again it was pretty much a breeze with the magma blades and with the destined death marked in our hands we were then transported to the ash capital where we had to take on probably one of the most formidable bosses in Sir Gideon. Oh wait, sorry, did I say most formidable? I meant the easiest pipsqueak known to man. I totally didn't die to him. Um one or two times but with that annoying little scoundrel dead um <laughs> we were then able to move on to godfrey now this fight again was somewhat trivial i guess with the magma blaze i was easily able to get him to half health and get him to his haralu um like or, like second phase um that was pretty easy to do but once i got him into haralu i don't know what it was i just struggled i don't know whether i was like getting nervous or something but i just my inputs were rubbish i was doing everything at the wrong time best thing to do when he is in his uh, sort of like haralu stage um again i always just took on the first like major hit where he throws you up in the air because i was also using my wonder physic straight away whilst going into the fight which i probably shouldn't do the best thing to do is run back or like roll back so you dodge that initial attack and then just lure him out with his big attacks again because that allows you to swing about two or three times before he's then swinging for you again. This one is pretty much like a running simulator, again, where you're just dodging his attacks, waiting for that window, but it is, as long as you can, like, maintain focus and keep an eye on what he's doing it is fairly easy to actually dodge his attacks and again just wait for those windows to just whittle his health down and take him out nice and easy so that's what i learned to do again that's what we did do and 
with that we only had Radigan and the Elden Beast in our way. Again, just going to quickly show you the build if you wanted to sort of like mimic it or use it for yourself exactly. Here is everything that we were running at the time. I did actually pick up the, is it the Arc Drake Talisman? The one that boosts your defense against holy damage. I picked that up in Faram Azula, that's where you get that from. And I also had the Scar Sorge Talisman as well uh, to boost strength because with the Magma Blades, they actually boost the most with the strength scaling. So if you are using the Magma Blades, uh, strength is your go-to for buffing the damage output. And again, it was pretty much just a rinse and repeat of everything that we had worked on throughout the playthrough, utilizing the jump attacks, using Radigan's attack move set to basically wait for the ones that left him vulnerable for the most amount of time. I also noticed, because I died again quite a few times attempting this, I noticed that at the very beginning you can get at least like two or three jump attacks on him before he actually starts attacking you. So definitely use that to your advantage if you're using like a colossal weapon or something um, and you're struggling with the Radigan fight, you can get two or three hits off like straight away before he actually starts retaliating. And then just lure sort of like the heavier hitting attacks. There's one where he jumps up in the air and does like a ground pound which can be very easily dodged, um, again, leaving him open for a good sort of like two or three attacks in quick succession. But mixing everything in with the Cerulean Tears that we're using to boost our damage negation and also have that one where it basically gives us a free hit, um, it made this fight a little bit more of a breeze. Um, like I said, I did die a couple of times just learning Radigan's fight again because it's been a while. But realistically, um, just keep the timings up with the dodges. There are some attacks you need to jump rather than say dodge, which will be better for you where I made that mistake. But yeah, just keep going at it. Keep dodging those attacks. Keep trying to lure the longer range attacks where he uses more energy uh, to leave him open for multiple attacks at one time and you should be fine. We got a good run going and I managed to actually just avoid most of the attacks and go in with I think about nine or eight Estus flasks into the Elden Beast fight and I don't want to toot my own horn or anything but I feel like with the Elden Beast fight it's not as hard and I'm actually quite good <laughs> at the Elden Beast fight compared to literally anything else. I don't know about you guys but it is a little bit lackluster because as I say, for me, it's a little bit easier than literally any other boss in the game because he has sort of like two or three attacks where you need to be paying attention because at the beginning, again, much like Radigan, he's open for an attack. All you need to do is run around behind him to avoid like the fire breath, like he's some sort of mystical Charizard. <laughs> I'm trying to clear you out. Just run behind him and again, he's open for about 10 seconds solid of just being wailed in the back and going from there, depending on the next attack he does, if it's just the normal sword swings, you can see them coming a mile away and you can dodge them fairly easy if he then does that sort of like lightning bolt like spray thing that he uses again that's fairly easy to dodge all you need to do is hold sprint and run somewhat like a diagonal direction and you'll be fine Again, if he uses like the Holy Stars, or I can't remember the name of the attack, but the one where he has like the golden orb that then sprays the little mini stars that like hone in on you. Again, running around sporadically in circles or running around like weaving in and out, you should be fine. You may get hit by a couple of them, but they don't deal that much damage. So again, fairly easy to dodge. And with like the like stars of Azula, the like dark mist that he makes with like the explosions that then uh, happen afterwards. Again, you can dodge and just run out of the way of it same with the flamethrower if he's in front of you and also the sacred blade attacks again very easy to dodge as soon as they're coming at you just roll and you're good to go but again this fight was just a constant just waiting for him to attack waiting for him to be open and then just laying into him for a good five or six seconds whilst he's susceptible to damage you can break his stance as well i was unfortunate enough not to get this to happen but with the attacks that I was mentioning before and just dodging everything and taking my time, it was easily done. I'm pretty sure I did this flawlessly or I had to like use the flask against like the falling stars um, one where it sporadically shoots those stars at you. But all in all, it left me open for my final attack and that was it. And um, yeah, <laughs> that, that was it. That was me completing Elden Ring with the rarest weapons available in the game. I know I didn't show absolutely every single weapon that could have been got. There's a multitude of different weapons that I could have farmed for, but I felt like these were the ones that you could get early game, which are also really powerful. And then the Magma Blade is just something that is ridiculously overpowered and useful to use. So that's why I wanted to showcase them in this particular video. There's of course other armor sets as well. So if you wanted to 
to say take on this challenge, please do so because I'm sure you can find a different armor piece and a different weapon or multiple different weapons to use and see how you can compare sort of how my progression went with my playthrough uh, to your own because potentially you're going to do better and obviously I wasn't using any buffs so maybe you can take a rare weapon and try and one shot bosses with all the different perfumes and stat build ups and everything like that so if you wanted to take this challenge and go even further with it do it go and have a try with this see what you can do with it it'll be really interesting to know what you guys would do instead and see how you would play out this playthrough uh, when using the rarest items and yeah um, that's literally <laughs> the end of this video and I was a bit anticlimactic um, I'm assuming most of you were clicking on this video just to see how long it took to say farm the items again they'll be on screen for like the timings and it's always interesting to like compare luck because I know most of these items you're probably going to be spending a little bit more on some of them maybe you get say the magma blade a lot sooner than I do but you're probably going to be spending a little bit more than say 10 minutes at the very beginning of the game to try and do it so maybe you can let me know what times you guys got when trying to farm for these specific items and compare them to myself but either way I just wanted to say a big thank you to you guys that are watching this video if you've made it to the very end, whether I'm in the background whilst you're doing some work or doing some chores, whatever it may be, just having me on in the background or watching this video in full, I really do appreciate all of you. You're all legends in my eyes and I couldn't thank you guys enough. In actual fact, if you have made it to the end of this video and you genuinely have watched it all, um, leave a comment down below saying, I am a legend and I'll obviously personally try and thank you um, and also maybe pin your comments here and there but yeah just let me know that you've got all the way to the end of the video by leaving that comment saying I'm a legend and whilst you're down there if you're new and for whatever reason you're still here if you've enjoyed the content do hit that subscribe button and the like button down below as well um, that way you let me know that you've enjoyed this long form content because it's the first time doing a longer video on this channel so it'll be interesting to know if you have liked it and if you want to stay tuned for more Elden Ring content and just general content in the future um, obviously do hit that subscribe button we are aiming for 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year so if you want to help out get us to that goal sooner rather than later it's free you can always change your mind in the future as well we should be back with a few more like rare item series obviously as you can probably tell this took up a little bit of time which is why the videos have been a little bit lackluster uh, in recent times but we are back on it we are going to be making some more content so definitely keep an eye out for that but um, for now I think I've taken up enough of your time so thank Thank you once again guys i hope you have an amazing day and i will catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make bye bye